Alright, hello and welcome back. Let's play yet another no name game game. Today's no name game game is, of course, Pang Palms. Not to be confused with actual Pang, or Pang Pang, or Super Pang Pang, or Hyper Ultra Turbo Pang Pang. It is not actually related to any of those games. At least, I, well, I can't detect it out of like the three seconds I spent in the time test, sound test. So your first button is. Check it out, man. This kid is breakdancing. And I'm pretty sure this was made in, like, what, 92? It said on the title screen? It was before breakdancing was a thing, actually. This kid invented breakdancing, is what I'll loosely claim to be true. Second button is a nice, reassuring jump. And... I'm not entirely sure what the point of it is, but it probably involves jumping and kicking. Third button, fourth button, not used. Eish. Come on, man. That's a little harsh. Let's see. Does fire kill me? Oh, so it does. Hmm. Seems to be a regular... Well, okay. To find regular puzzle game here. We've got more of like an action arcade kind of puzzle game. We're, we're talking more like Super Pang Pang, Tang, whatever. We're going off of that. Where um, instead of balloons falling on you, you gotta destroy the balloons. That, that was a little inco- oh, man. Did somebody say wave equation? Anyway, we've just... Hmm. So the fire on the ground kind of adds an interesting twist where you can't just- Did he have a jetpack for a second there? I, I think I'm seeing things. But basically, the fire makes- Hmm. And, and the spikies can get you through the platforms. This game is surprisingly difficult, which isn't too far unlike most arcade games. And just like a certain other game that I'm sure you've heard of, stars make you invincible. Let the power of celebrity take us through the stage. Oh, there were race cars in the background. But yeah, it, it seems to follow like the basic um, action-y puzzle sort of template. You've got like nice, wide-open, fancy... Um, backgrounds, you've got a simple gameplay mechanic, you've got a crap ton of weird, brightly animated, colorful enemies all trying to kill you, and I guess a little unique to this game, you've kind of got an omnipresent hazard that's always, well, okay, the f now did the fire go away because it didn't feel like it anymore, or did the fire go away because I put in a new credit? I'm guessing the latter, but it uh, could always be the former. But anyway, you've got an omnipresent gameplay mechanic always there to kill you, yeah, I mean, come on. Arcade operators are people too. They need your money. It's... So, on the one hand, yes, we've got two balloon monsters, but on the other hand, that seems to have horrendous implications, implying that the balloons are possibly sentient? Let's, let's not dwell on the implications. Also, Rockhead? What the heck? I'm rather impressed with this game's enemy variety, just because, I mean, we're in, like, three stages in, and it has not even thought about repeating itself. We, instead of, like, the spiky quill guys, now, yeah, we've got the head... the head mod... I, I don't even know what that is. Like, a lot of games at least have enemies based off of, like, mythology or fantasy tales or something, but I don't... I don't think I've ever seen a stone golem like that, ever. Ah, that's where the last balloon's hiding. You're mine now. Although it was surprisingly forgiving of that game to just, like, completely remove all the hazards. You can't really hear the music, but, uh, if you strain a little bit, you can hear it. This one's especially cool. Okay, it, it started out cool at the beginning of the level, but, um, kind of went away. So, like most arcade, or uh, most action puzzle kind of games... After a while, like, the action just sort of becomes incoherent. Actually, that's not even really true, because Pang was all about kind of, like, patience and slowness and planning ahead and not dying. This game seems to be about, like, everything ridiculous happening all at once. Pretty good tact for an arcade game to take. I mean, so far... Okay, so if a game wants to do, like, a bunch of crazy stuff and go over and over and over, it kind of lives or dies by how long it can stay original, stay fun, stay fancy. And this game, I mean, it's doing a pretty great job. So far, I don't really feel like... 
well, okay, I'm still in the honeymoon phase where it's like everything feels new, everything feels cool, everything's still awesome. But eventually things are going to get a little more predictable. After we start seeing that ghost like 70 times, he'll be a lot less charming. Cripes. Talk about an icy personality. This is Golem, you can just like hang on him. You just go in for a ride. He's like the most harmless enemy. Like, stage one we had the porcupines that, that they can kill you through platforms, that's how good they are. This guy, I don't I don't even think he can kill me. Let's test this. Oh, so you put in a credit and all your friends go goodbye. Which, I mean, it's just kind of okay. Because you gotta ask yourself, do you want a challenging game or do you want to make it through the game? And I kind of feel like if you're gonna put a credit in anyway, it's like you've already kind of given up on challenge and you just want to see the end of the game. So I, I kind of appreciate that the game was nice enough to give you like a ridiculous advantage every time you put in a credit. Because I mean, if you're gonna buy your way to victory, you want to at least get a good return on investment. Just like jumping in the air doing spin kicks just, just kung fuing balloons oh okay there we go there's our whoa one new environmental hazard but let's see if our good friends whoa okay so the ice snakes don't even kill you it d neither does the rock guy he just punches you up like the only thing that can kill you are ghosts Remember, kids, the only thing in life you should be scared of are ghosts. All other monsters are actually kind of friendly. I'm a little surprised, yeah. Like, so far, the beginning, the first stage, it had, like, two things that could kill you, and now it's just, like, scaling back. It's a game that gets easier as you go along. Kind of like a hidden little secret game. It's like, okay, we know you've seen this game. Now we want you to enjoy it. You've made it through the initiation phase. Now you're going to enjoy the game. And you're like, what? That's that's not how video games work. I'm I'm enthused. It kinda feels like you're entering a secret club. It's like, okay, you made it past the first stage, you put in some credits into this game, now we're gonna make you have fun. And I guess it's it's still extracting its toll, but I feel like your lives are lasting longer and longer. And it's just making things fun. Although it's kind of interesting, because it's like, oh, oh, it did show where we were. Because, yeah, I mean, it's like, if you're going to go through the trouble of um, creating, like, giant math for us to see, like, how far, how much progress we've made, then you might as well um, show where we are on the whole map. So much stuff going on, and then, like... Well, either the balloons are popping, or... Oh, is, is that another enemy to help us? So it was a carrot man and a balloon, but... Nah, because I put in another coin, now all the bad guys are going to go away. Hmm. Oh, okay, I was, I was a little afraid that the game was, like, a little broken there. You put in a credit and everything freezes, and it's like, that's not supposed to happen. Hmm. Well, okay, the honeymoon's kind of wearing off, and the game's getting a little more repetitive. I can kind of see how one wouldn't be able to survive, like, 70 stages. Let's see if the knight can actually kill us. Oh, and he can! Inexplicably hitting us on the bottom as he charges us from the front, but nonetheless. Okay, so things are starting to get hard. Maybe they just kind of wanted to lure you in in that beginning part. Also, I'm not entirely... Oh, gosh. Invisible Moon. Oh, yeah, I you can't even kill enemies. Yeah, just those typical action arcade puzzle games. Where, like, basically all you can do is complete your objective. Like, in Pang, like, all you can do is kill the balloons. You can't really kill anything trying to kill you. Well, I mean, I guess you could with the power-ups. But for the most part, your mission was clear. 
I, it was it was clear in that it was an obvious mission, and it was also clear in that you wanted to clear the stage. What is in the background? It looks like a giant mansion, but I think the implicit theme, or the uh, subtle theme to all of these backgrounds, is that they're like attractions within the theme park. Except, this one just looks like a straight-up mansion. It's like, what kind of attraction is that? It's just a giant mansion? In fact, it looks like a corn room or something. I, I guess you had to appeal to like the people, the uh, nouveau riche wannabes and the corn maze enthusiasts all in one ticket. Also, is it me or does this jetpack work a lot more like spring boots? All right, let's see if we can parse out where we are in the. Oh, kind of wanted to see how much longer this game will go. Although. Knowing these action arcade games, like all they gotta do is throw in a new enemy every five or so levels and just add in more and more balloons for you to pop, put the platforms in a random array, and they're good. So, with like about a couple days of work, you can easily milk out like a hundred stages, I bet. It's not even an exaggeration. God, I think I think I actually played through Pang one time. It it took like all day. I, at least I was playing with a friend, but oh my god, it's like you get to the end of a game like that and you're like, what? What have I accomplished? I've wasted my life. And it's like it, it's a little better if you're playing with a friend, because then you can be like, oh yeah, I had fun with a friend. It was great. But I mean, a game like this, it's like you make it to the end and it's like then then what? Then anything. Huh. I guess all the arcade games, really, you kind of make it to the end and you're like, what the heck? What have I done? But I think especially a game like this, where it's like you're not technically mastering anything, and it's like, it's not really required of you to get better at the game. It's like you're not really accomplishing anything, per se. That being said, the roller coaster does look pretty fun. Oh, that's, that's a very irritating mechanic where the balloons are, like, out of your reach. Yeah, I think we're about good. Whoa. Huh. What's... How do you work this? Okay, that, that was the most baffling name entry screen. Like, not, nothing I was doing made any sense. Like, the best I could do was make one of the periods disappear. Gosh, well, at least it's got a psychedelic background. Hmm. So I'm tempted to say we made some real progress, but I can't really contemplate going through going more. Still, I mean, this game, it had some cool little gimmicks, and it's bright, and it's flashy and fun, and if you can turn off your brain for long enough it takes, for as long as it takes to beat the game, then you could probably really enjoy this game. Also, too, it's kind of the game where it's like, if you've got a second player, then you can, like, get twice the enjoyment out of it, which is good, because it costs you twice as much, but, I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of another game, but hey, nice, nice to see a variation on a theme, at least. Well, on that note, this cat's got a scat.